Alright, so the One UI 6 is almost here and there are quite a few small and big changes that have happened. But let me talk about the ones that I think will truly matter to you when you use your phone every day. First, finding and doing things on your phone is going to be faster. So first, I can directly open my camera into a mode that I want. For example, food in this case. So there's a custom camera widget now which you can configure and you can set which lens, which mode uh, should it open in, which folder it should save the photos in, you can give it a name and you can even give it a photo so you know exactly what kind of widget it is. Next in the finder, now if you look for an app, it will also show you any related shortcuts or activities associated with that app. And here are some examples for you. And you know, you can directly search for that shortcut or that action. So I could search for selfie and then take selfie as an option. I could search for voice and then start recording or view recordings as an option. Speaking of doing things faster, the camera app has become a lot easier and faster to use. Now in your camera app, you'll be able to change the photo resolution very quickly. So if you want to jump from 12 to 50 to 200, you'll be able to do that. Same for videos, you'll be able to shift between different resolutions and different frame rates really quickly with this small window here. And good news for those who used to complain about slow shutter speed on the Samsung phones, they can now switch to a minimum quality optimization and after that your shutter speed is actually pretty fast. Earlier you had to turn on scene optimizer if you wanted to scan documents. But then that scene optimizer applied to all photos as well. But now they've separated scanning documents from scene optimizer. So that way you can only scan documents and you don't have to apply scene optimization on any of your photos. And there's also a really cool auto scan feature now. So if you point to a document, it'll click a photo automatically. And if your finger or anything is there at the edges, it will remove that on its own. And now once you're done taking photos, then comes editing those photos. And there are quite a few changes there. First, now when you swipe up on a picture, you'll get these three options to quickly edit your photo. So just background effect, remaster and object eraser. And so depending on what kind of picture it is and what kind of editing you require, there's an option for you. And now if you make edits to your photos, you'll be able to copy those edits. So all the values of saturation, white balance, exposure, all of those things you can copy and paste on any picture in your gallery. Actually, iPhone has had this for quite some time. So it's really good that Samsung finally has it on their phones now too. The editing tools are also very well organized. They've got their names, so you don't have to guess. All the other extra options are very nicely laid out and organized here because earlier they were tucked inside this overflow menu and that's how it looked. And also let's say that you make a couple of edits. You can now undo each of those step by step, which was actually missing in the last version. Now in One UI 5, you could already customize the lock screen with various clock types, change the scale and the font, but now you can move it around and place it more flexibly so that it doesn't cover your wallpaper awkwardly. There are also some more fonts that you could customize with, but quite frankly, they aren't too readable, so I wouldn't be so excited about it. Next, the weather app also has quite a few nice changes. First, you get these beautiful weather widgets that show more information than they did. So these are the new widgets and as you drop them, you can see they've got these fancy animations and they look quite nice. Even the weather app looks and behaves a bit differently. So if you scroll, you'll see that there's generally more spaced out information. And then as you scroll further, you'll see, you know, the AQI information is right there. The cards are a little different. Look at the way the sunrise and sunset times are shown and even the moon phase information is displayed. Next, there's significant changes in the quick settings and the notification tray. The quick setting toggles, uh, they're rearranged to make more sense. You know, all essential toggles like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, display, they're faster to access and everything else is paginated here. It's somewhat like a mix of stock Android and MIUI. In terms of interaction, if you tap on the icon itself, it's going to turn it on or off. But if you tap on the text, it'll show you more information like, you know, Wi-Fi networks or Bluetooth networks. You could also turn this setting on and with this swiping down on left will open notifications while swiping down on the right will open up all settings in one go. Another big change is that notifications now are these separate but bigger cards and it feels a bit heavier. Earlier they were compact, nicer, cleaner, but now I feel I just have to get used to the new one. And a welcome change, the music playback notification now shows the full album art and has this beautiful visualization as the music plays. This by the way happens on the lock screen as well. And now let's talk about some smaller changes. 
So first is that they've finally moved battery settings outside in the main list, making it much easier to access. And even protect battery setting has been bumped outside within the battery settings. Within security and privacy, they've introduced something called as auto blocker, which is turned off by default. You can obviously turn it on. And with this, your phone will be better prepared to handle any external threats or malicious attempts. The Samsung Calendar app has a new schedule view that gives you a gist of what's going to happen in a chronological order. And this was missing in the earlier uh, Calendar app. Also, there's tighter integration between the Reminders app and the Calendar app. So in the Samsung Reminders app, let's say you create a reminder and you attach a date and time. Just a date is also good enough actually. And let's say you hit save. Now, if you go into the Calendar app, that reminder will show up with a purple tag because you know, that's the color for reminders. There's also a new app called Studio that will let you create and edit videos with more functionalities, which is great. You can access this from within the Gallery app also. All right, so those were some changes in One UI 6 that I think would really change the way you use your phone every day. Now, there are quite a few others that I've not touched upon, but those are very minor. You may not even notice that difference. So I haven't really talked about those in this video. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed watching the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon and mark all really helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next one.